Hello friends, before we begin this video I want to talk a little bit about my tool which is Trade Predictor. Uh, as you can see this is the tool that I'm using for all of my content um, starting in maybe December or January. I have really switched to using Trade Predictor for my content. Let's talk about a little, a little bit about why I developed this tool. Uh, of course a part of the reason why I developed it was commercial, commercial basis. I wanted to sell it and make a little bit of money and I wanted to sort of improve my skills as a programmer but really the point of creating this was to make my job as a content creator here on YouTube easier. It was made uh, specifically for me to automate my content, for me to be able to generate all of the content relevant about the file, all the relevant content and make it easy for me to read and present to you on YouTube. Uh, just to give you a little bit of statistics about what I do. Uh, back in August or September when I was making my videos, it I would be I would spend up to four hours a day editing my content. Um, gathering screenshots, writing a script, reading that stuff, uh, making sure I read uh, uh, as the appropriate slide is showing and editing all that stuff. It was so much work. But ever since I made Trade Predictor, I can just uh, run a file through it, run a genome through it, and record my initial reaction to it, and it takes me 20 minutes. So I automated a process that is supposed to take me 4 hours into something that takes me 20 minutes. However, it came at a cost. Uh, let's talk about the cost. The cost is that my videos became a lot more boring. Uh, I notice when I compare statistics uh, now versus in August, Audience retention is much lower. Uh, views are about the same, but audience retention is much lower. And what this means is YouTube is not going to recommend my content to um, to people who are not subscribed to me. <laughs> right? So I want to... Of course, I could continue growing slowly and getting what I get 130 subscribers a month and slowly improving my views this way. But really, what I need to do is I need to improve my audience retention. So I noticed that a big part of the reason, uh, a big part of the drops in audience retention are in the parts of the video where I discuss monogenic traits. So I talk about all this boring stuff, all these monogenic traits, and I know it can be very boring and very difficult to follow for some of you people. For most of you, of course, most people watching me aren't some, uh, aren't some nerd who's been doing this for years like me. Most people watching my content don't know what, what that is, or what most of these monogenic traits are. So, what's going to happen is I'm going to be making videos without the monogenic traits information in them. I might glance over some of them, but I'm going to try to not talk about that stuff as much. Uh, and if you want me to publish any of the results that I make, uh, sure, I can publish them online and you can look at the result the complete result yourself and you can see if there's anything I missed and you, you would like to see that, you, you will be able to see it. So for example today I'm making a video on Malta Boy and I'm gonna not talk about a lot of the relevant stuff, especially in the monog monogenic trade section. However, if you really want to see what Malta Boy scores for these categories, you can look, um, you can look at... Um, Link to the result will be in the description of the video. You can look in the description. You will find the link there. So this is what Malta Boy and Ancient North Eurasian from Upper Paleolithic scores with my tool. Let me zoom in so that it's easier for you to see. So his Y DNA is P. Uh, I mean is R. That's the most precise uh, subclade for Y DNA that my trade predictor could determine for him. That is because he has. Uh, he definitely has R. He's got 54 R variants out of 66 total, but he does not have R1A or R1B or R2. So uh, ergo, most likely his, he, he falls into a subclade of R that is not looked for by, by my trade predictor. Uh, his lineage is not something that my trade predictor looks for. So the most precise subclade that my trade predictor can give for him is R. Uh, just some information about Malta Boy. He was living in the Upper Paleolithic and he was living in Siberia. Uh, he, was a, uh, he was a part of a group that contributed to the ethnogenesis of a lot of different folks to Easter hunter-gatherers in Europe, to Caucasus hunter-gatherers and Iranian Neolithic farmers in the Middle East, to Native Americans in uh, um, in Americas. Uh, he contributed to to Tarim, um, to a lot of different um, different 
world ethnicities. He's sort of the link that connects Native Americans to Northern Europeans, to Baloch people, to Caucasians, and uh, just a very, a very archaic individual that contributed to a lot of people. Now let's go ahead and check his polygenic risk scores, what he scores for that, what kind of diseases he might have had. It looks like he's got a above average odds for atrial fibrillation. It looks like he's got a below average odds for deep vein thrombosis. Really good to see. Uh, DVT is um, really unfortunate, but he doesn't have it, so good for him. For bipolar disorder type 1, it looks like he's got a below average odds for that as well, which is really good to see. He's got a below average odds for schizophrenia as well. It looks like he's got a slightly above average odds for type 2 diabetes. Okay. It looks like he's got a below average odds for Alzheimer's, and it looks like he's got a uh, slightly below average odds for multiple sclerosis. It looks like he's got three risk variants for breast cancer out of 16, which is pretty typical, pretty good. Six risk variants for testicular cancer out of 12, which is pretty typical. Normally, I would go and check uh, in, the, in a monogenic resor result what he scores, but I'm not going to do it in this video, uh, um, just to make it less boring. For celiac disease section, looks like he's got two risk variants for celiac disease out of 10, which is all right. For GSS, 0 out of 12, which for GSS, German strausler Scheinker syndrome. So once again, really good to see. He's pretty healthy. 4 for Crohn's disease out of 22, which is pretty good, pretty typical as well. 0 for Raffensteins out of 14, which is once again pretty typical. And 5 for Parkinson's out of 36, which is kind of on the high end of typical, but also okay. So it looks like there's nothing too concerning in this result. Uh, now let's go ahead and check his Nashakot calculator results. What kind of phenotype he resembles most? So the phenotype he resembles most is this. Uh, followed by this, followed by this, which is very quite surprising because a version of this phenotype with green eyes is what um, Western hunter gatherers typically score closest to with my Nashakot tool. So kind of interesting. But as you can see, this version has brown eyes and darkish pigmentation. Uh, it looks like the closest mixture is a mixture of basically, let me um, do this, half this plus half this. And the second closest mixture is basically half this stranded plus half this South Asian phenotype. Uh, in terms of the uh, coloring, it looks like he's got darkest brown eyes, definitely very, very dark eye color. Uh, likelihood of brown eyes here is only 17.8%. Uh, and there is pretty much no likelihood of any color lighter than brown for eye color. Uh, for hair color, it looks like he definitely has black hair. There is no likelihood of any hair color lighter than black. I mean, even dark brown hair here is really, really unlikely. For skin color, it looks like he's got light brown or olive skin. Uh, once again, any kind of um, white or pale skin would be really unlikely, but also dark brown would be really unlikely as well. He's quite brown. Uh, for hair texture, it looks like he's got wavy hair and other, well, curly, is, curly and straight is also possible, but kinky is not really possible. And we're not going to talk about this. We are not going to talk about this because it is too boring. Uh, people don't watch... Uh, people click off the video when i talk about that stuff so now let's go ahead and look at the phenotype oracle uh, what mixture or what phenotypes he might resemble this is a 12-way oracle so 16.6 percent this plus 25 percent this plus 8.3 percent this plus 33 this is the biggest group that he scores plus 16.67 percent this uh resembles him in terms of phenotype so if you could morph all of this together in these percentages that would resemble um, that would resemble this Malta boy. Quite dark, quite a dark person. Uh, wouldn't be considered white by today's standards. Uh, what about Oka2 and HERC2 eye color calculator results? So this is an eye color calculator that only takes into account genotypes in the Oka2 and HERC2 region. And with this calculator, it looks like he is scoring brown eyes followed by dark brown eyes. And there's actually 11% likelihood of hazel eyes as well, which is quite interesting. And now what about ethnic calculator results? What ethnicities my trade predictor determines for him? Uh, with the ethnic calculator results, my boy is closest to itself. Well, no, obviously, because he's a part of the Oracle. But followed by himself, there is Botai hunter-gatherer from Kazakhstan. Uh, Botai hunter-gatherers are known to be very similar to ancient North Eurasians. Followed by him is a Turkic individual. Uh, from the steppe, followed by him is Afontavagara Tri, which is another ancient North Eurasian. Followed by that is Livonians from medieval Estonia. Followed by that is uh, Chornik Lubuki Turks. In case you don't know what that is, Chornik Lubuki Turks were a group of medieval Turkic, pe Turkic people who lived near Mardovia. Uh, they are kind of like the ancestors of Mishar Tatars. You can say this way. or uh, they're, they're the ancestors of a lot of ethnicities in that area, but mostly Mishar Tatars. 
All right, and he's getting more. Actually, one of the models that are close to him is Turkic UG, UGU001 plus Bayelulai Lithuania Medieval. So a mixture of basically Turkic plus white uh, ends up being quite close to Malta Boy. Quite interesting. And finally, last thing we're going to look at in this video is going to be pretty sure. To, well, not the last thing. Actually, there's one thing I want to show you as well. So last thing we're going to be looking for now is the biomarkers panel. And it looks like he's got a below average levels of vitamin D. All right. It looks like he's got a below average levels of LDL cholesterol, which is really good. Below average levels, levels of HDL cholesterol, which is not so good. Uh, below average levels of glucose levels, which is really good. Uh, slightly above average hemoglobin, which is, I guess, quite all right. He does, he's not in a risk zone. Uh, he, he's got a slightly below average blood pressure, which is once again, really good. Well, there is... Uh, there, there is technically a lower limit for how good, how low your blood pressure can be, because if it's too low, there's some other uh, issues that, that arise. But especially if you are like um, anorexic, sometimes they have problems with low blood pressure. But in his case, it's good to have this kind of a blood pressure. For iron, it looks like his level of iron is pretty much average. So once again, pretty good. And the last thing I want to show you in this video, this is something I just added. It's the um, blood type predictor. So we're going to scroll at the very bottom. And his blood type is definitely O. His blood type is O. Uh, type A and type B is really improbable. Type AB, completely impossible. So, yeah, definitely blood type O. Well, that was uh, Malta Boy. Uh, if you want to explore the entirety of this result, uh, and there is a lot to explore. There is, there is so much to talk about that I'm not going to cover. So if you want to cover all of that by yourself and see what he scores for all of the other traits, you can actually, I will actually publish this um, result onto my GitHub and you will be able to, and I'll, I'm going to include the link in the description of the video. So you can actually look at the entire result uh, and ex examine it thoroughly. But that's pretty much all there is that I want to show you. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share to your friends or whatever. Goodbye.